We're inside the WB Mason Report here on GoHofstra.com. Mike Maravito joined with Hofstra baseball coach John Russo. And coach, seems like a, a big change. A year ago, you guys almost an afterthought in the preseason poll. Picked near the bottom, second to last. Now, second place uh, preseason pick in the coaches poll. A lot of expectations here in Hempstead. <laughs> we'll take the expectations. It definitely has improved in a year. And, uh, you know, like anything else, you're going to have to play out the season. But I like all the publicity and stuff and recognition. I think it's a great honor for all the kids and um, I know they're really enjoying it. To be honest, we're enjoying it. It helps with uh, recruiting and you know preparing for the upcoming years, but you know, after starting the game on Friday, it's, it all doesn't mean too much. Now let's talk about last year before we get into this year's squad. Big piece missing, right fielder All-American, Danny Palma, CAA Player of the Year. Have you stayed in contact with him and what's it going to be like to not have him um, in the dugout this year and on the field, really one of the biggest leaders of the, of the program. We stay in contact with Danny almost you know, daily. He'll be at Oklahoma for our first series and then in California for another series. I mean, he bleeds you know, the royal blue, and um, it, it's going to be a big miss. Uh, there is no replacing Danny Poma. That's the one thing you know, we've decided and, and thought is it's going to have to be a group effort from a lot of guys to improve a little to replace, and there's just not one person that can do it. He had too much of a monster year, he had too much of a uh, big influence on the team, so, you know, I, I talked to the kids about it being, a, you know, just a group effort. I have to be better, you know, Jared Hammer's going to have to be a little bit better, and and uh, a couple guys, and then, you know, losing Ford also doesn't hurt, so, you know, we got our work cut out for us. Now, you mentioned Matt Ford, uh, one of three all CA players that won't be on this year's squad or be able to play. Kevin Flynn, the senior, uh, all DH, also graduated along with Poma, but Ford, an unfortunate injury in fall ball, will be, uh, will have to medically redshirt this year. How tough is it going to be not to have him on that side of the infield? It's going to be really tough. I mean, you're talking the CA Defensive Player of the Year. You're talking a guy that hit in the three hole, you know, batted 380 with 50 RBIs. I, I mean, arguably the second best player in the conference last year behind Danny. And, uh, you know, more than anything, we're going to miss uh, Matt Ford's toughness. You've you're got a three-year starter. There's nothing he hasn't seen. There's nothing he can't deal with. And um, there's, there's no overcoming his toughness. And, you know, you make a pretty big move of going from a guy that's a three-year starter, maybe the best player in the CAA, to a, a freshman. So it's a, it's a big miss. Now, sticking with that infield, you talked about him already, Jared Hammer. Preseason co CA player of the year. A lot of expectations for the four year starter over at first base. Have you had a chance to sit down with him? And obviously, the guys that were hitting in front of him last year won't be there, different guys, but you know, possibly similar hitter, hitters he'll have at the top of the lineup. Well, you know, I talked to Hammer about that same exact thing about he's going to have to have a better year than he did last year, and he could end up having less RBIs and less numbers and have a better year, really, because of. Danny and Ford losing those two in front of him, that's 130 runs that we lost from last year. And I don't think whoever I put in a two or three hole is going to get to 130. So that's obviously right off the top. It's going to give you know Hammer less chances than what he did last year. And you know, like I told him, he could you know hit for a higher average, hit uh, you know more doubles, more homers, but have less RBIs than what he did last year. He can't. He just has to make his opportunities and the shots that he does you know at a higher percentage because. Seemed like last year, almost every time he came up, there was people on base, and you know he drove them in. He had 66 RBIs, I believe, and um, we had a great year. But he's going to have to be much more disciplined, and you know really worked on base percentage because I feel like with you know Jackson, Perez, right setter batting behind them, maybe they can start getting some of the ribbies. Now you mentioned Perez has had to sit out last year uh, due to an injury. He came in with Danny Pomo. Actually, him and Pomo only guys to play every game. Two seasons ago, uh, led the squad in home runs. Now back at that third base position in the hot corner. You excited to have him back? And what does he bring to the lineup on a power point of view? You know, real excited to have Joe Perez. He's a great leader. He's a really tough kid. Um, he really has experience. So you know, he'll pick up a little bit of Ford. You know, what we lost with Ford in that area, and and then he brings a you know a different dynamic with his power and um, you know able to hit six seven in the lineup. He's gonna you know probably get a lot of good pitches to hit and. You know, the thing we're super excited about is he brings a lot of stability defensively at third base, which, you know, uh, thank God for TJ and Kevin Flynn last year. They, they did a great job and very admirable, but their defense wasn't spectacular. And, uh, you know, Joe the year before, I think, had five errors at third base and, uh, you know, and made a bunch of unbelievable plays. So that, that's something that we need to, to get to the stability of his defense back at third base. Now his partner on the left side of the infield, Dalton Rouleau, came in as a Juco guy last year and I'll see a shortstop. Actually, it was good enough defensively to move forward over to second base. 
You have to be happy with his performance last year, but are the expectations even higher for the senior now as he enters his final year? You know, we lose Ford, and then it uh, comes out in the early poll that uh, Dalton is the CAA preseason defensive <laughs> player of the year. So tells you how good those two are up the middle. And, uh, you know, Dalton has, uh, the, I guess, the most uh, – unlikely hitter you want to face, you know, or least recognized hitter, because we thought at the end of the year Dalton arguably could have been our best hitter in our lineup, and, you know, he made first team all-conference, and he's a guy that, you know, he played injured for about three weeks last year, and it really hurt his numbers, but, you know, it's one of those things, if he didn't play, it would have really hurt the team, so instead he played, played through an injury, really killed his stats, so I, I think he could put up really big numbers compared to what he did last year if he can stay healthy. Now, behind the plate, Matt Reistetter, a junior and now in his third season with the squad. Really, very few guys you see handle the staff as well as he does. Offensively, though, do you possibly see those numbers jump up now that he's in um, his junior year? And how much does he mean to that bottom of the lineup because one of the more clutch hitters in your, in your order? I agree. I think, um, you know, if you had a preseason, you know, guy of the, the practice time, it would be Matt Reistetter. He's been working out unbelievably hard. He's in the best shape of his entire life. He looks great. He's acting uh, really mature, and, and you can just tell that he's made a big jump. I think it helped a lot with the experience last year, and he had a great experience in summer baseball where he got a lot of confidence. And, you know, basically since August, September, we've seen a different kid, but I can argue since January we've seen even a different guy. I mean, he's, he's really motivated right now. He looks great, and um, I, I think he can do a lot of damage wherever we hit. And, it's tough. It looks like he had such a bad year, but he hit 280 on most teams. That'd be pretty normal, but it's 50 below points below our average. So, uh, you know, he knows that. I know for sure, and he's really motivated. And to be honest, in the early season hitting, he's hit as good as any hitter we had. Okay, transitioning now from the infield to the outfield, Kenny Jackson, the lefty out in left field. You know, really was nestled into that heart of the lineup. I had a rough start to the season. I remember you benched him one game, and after that, the rest was history. One of the more complete hitters on the team. Should we expect the same numbers from him this year? And with what was lost with Palma and Ford, possibly even more expectations? We know he has a big job. He's going to you know, bat behind Hammer again like he did all last year. And I feel with all the recognition, you know, Hammer's been getting a little bit. He's going to be pitched around. And listen, they're going to pitch around him and go to a guy that had 51 RBIs. So we'll, we'll take our chance. And, you know, I thought Kenny had a a really good year. You're right. He, he struggled early, and then even really put up, you know, 340 with 51 RBIs. And you know, he's another guy that got out in the summer ball and, and did really well and, and learned and grown. And you know, it's just been a fun process to see where Kenny came in as a freshman and, and who he is now. And you know, three years later, he's almost a grown man, and um, he's just uh, very mature. And we're very confident in him. And uh, he's one of those guys that goes about his business in the right way and, and leads definitely by his play. And moving to to his left now in center field, one of the more fun guys to watch out there. Another JUCO guy, Austin Nyman, now a senior in his second year with the Pride. Someone who who offensively in that nine spot likes to put the ball in play. Doesn't walk that much. Doesn't strike out that much. And probably the fastest guy on the team has a lot of range out there. Bump home at a right field last year. Have to be excited to have him back. <laughs> He's great to have back. I think uh, if you ask, uh, Austin's everybody's favorite player. Um, he definitely plays with the zero to 60 mentality that we do. He's the epitome of it. And, um, you know, what a great year he had in the nine hole. I, I think for most of the season, he was third in the team and run scored because he was getting on base in front of Dalton and Danny and Ford. And, uh, you know, he's, he's got the running game really down and hit, his swing has really improved. And uh, he was real consistent. He batted 298 out of conference, 298 in conference. So, you know, I'm always saying I'll be a better coach when I know I'm going to get. And, you know exactly what you're going to get with Austin Diamond. He's going to come compete every day, go in one direction at full speed and, and uh, not let anything stop him. Now in right field, Poma's position last year, is there almost a competition for that spot or possibly a uh, platoon uh, possibility out there? I know Taylor Stewart is back. You also have Brian Verbitsky, who's really been more of a pitcher if you look at last year and what he did in the, in the Cape um, this past summer. Or, or is there possibly a guy that may be under the radar that could have that spot? We have a guy, um, Brent Hall, that we recruited from College of Sequoias. It's the same place that Joe Perez came in from, and um, he was their three-hole hitter out there, and he's uh, done great. Uh, I think since the fall, he's added around 20 pounds. He's really big, 6'3", 220, super athletic, maybe one of the most athletic guys on our team. And, um, you know, it's been really figuring out his swing of late, and, 
I, I talked that he didn't have the greatest fall, but he had six home runs in the fall. <laughs> so, and he's super athletic, and um, you know, every day I can see him getting more and more confident. And then you re reply, you know, you bring in Taylor Stewart, who, um, you know, the few times he, he got to play 30 some games last year, he was Player of the Week one week. One week he hit in the three hole when Ford was was. Uh, uh, suspended, so he had to hit in the three hole against Old Dominion. Basically, won that series for us right. with his play. And you know, I love Taylor. I think he he can bring so much. And if you know, at the end of the year, you told me uh, Taylor Stewart was a CA Player of the Year, I wouldn't be surprised because he has that much ability. I I just think it needs to click in with him and the confidence that you know we have in him and what we see with his athletic abilities. And to be honest, it's starting to happen. I mean, he's he's really turned the corner. And then there's a third guy, Rob Caffiero, that'll you know, go between uh, right field, second base, third base, backup, right center, catcher. He's probably our, you know, our, our epitome of a baseball player. He can do it all. He'll uh, probably start the season in the two hole. And, you know, what a great addition he's been from junior college, uh, from Catawba Valley Community College in North Carolina. He, um, he's been a, just a great leader, come into an experienced club and, you know, really kind of stepped into a leadership type role, which is hard to do. You know, usually a kid that comes in with so many returning players just tries to fit in and he's not only fitting in he's he's leading so he's he's done a great job too and sticking just on the offensive side uh, for one more player you kind of alluded to him earlier at that second base spot a, a freshman from Florida Kevin Brantley uh, is he expected to contribute right away or is this possibly a a, a project in the first couple of years here in Hempstead you know originally when Ford wasn't hurt it was going to break Kevin in uh, slowly but now it's a uh, Kevin right to the fire. We're gonna start him at Oklahoma and you know get him games played. He'll he'll move around a little bit, but it'll be mostly at second base. And you know I know one thing. He's super confident and he has great ability. And um, you know right now we're just gonna have to go with what it is. He's gonna make some freshman mistakes and uh, make some <laughs> bad plays in the field. I think it's all stuff I'm expecting and where and. Um, but I know this. I know he has great confidence. He has great ability and um, he won't be scared come this weekend. Okay, now let's transition to the pitching side of things. Really, you know, hitting as completed as it was last year towards the end of the season, pitching kind of fell apart with injuries, and then just the, the age, of, you had a few freshmen in there, first taste of college ball, but now you look at everyone coming back, really six guys, it's pretty deep if all, everyone's healthy. Can you talk about the rotation and really uh, the fact that Dave DeRico now, coming back from Tommy John, how much that will add to this staff? Well, we'll talk about David first. David has came back great, and um, he's had a little bit of a setback now. He's in uh, month 11, I believe, of his Tommy John, and they say somewhere between 9 and 11 you have a setback, but now it's just been of this week. He's starting to feel good again, and you know, earlier we projected him to, to pitch here at Oklahoma. I don't know if that'll happen, but now our main goal is to move him to try to get him ready for James Madison. And you know, The thing that's really stabilized our pitching staff, I feel like, is Joe Berg. Um, you know, he's been a reliever his whole career, and last year when David went down, he stepped into that Friday night role, and, you know, he's just become a starter and really good, and he'll be our opening night starter at Oklahoma, and, you know, he's really helped out. And then the other couple guys you were alluding to were Nick Kozlowski and David Jesh. I mean, Nick Kozlowski, what, what a year he's had. You know, at this point last year, at this conversation, he wasn't even really a thought, and, you know, he's throwing game two of the conference tournament and beating VCU. And um, so he'll start this coming weekend against Oklahoma, and then you return a, a Tiedemann who was all conference, and you know he locked down every Saturday start all year. And, you know maybe he did have some bad starts in there, but he also had some really good ones. Absolutely. But more important to us was we could depend on him, and, that, and that's what I love about John Tiedemann. Good, bad, and different. You can count on him. He doesn't miss his start. He might not feel great, but it's kind of what I said about Dalton. You know he played three weeks through an injury. Tiedemann through couple weeks they're not feeling the best and, and listen I, I very much respect what he did for us last year and, and counted on him again big for this year and and then uh, the last guy Jerry Rogers and you know you got Jerry Rogers who's had a great early season right now he's been a, a different person since January on and off the field I, I think he's growing up he pulled a 394 GPA in the fall and uh, you know which is really good compared to what he came in here as and uh, I just can't tell you how much I'm proud of him so far, what he's done, and, and he'll probably start at Oklahoma. Now, with those six guys, of course, come CAA time, you only have three spots in the, on the weekend rotation. Does competition here breed excellence that, you know, that three of these guys will be left out can still help the team, of course, but that really everyone healthy, when everyone's healthy, you know that those three guys are going to be the top. You got it. I, you know, one of the things I talked to him about is 
I'll never apologize for having too much talent. And uh, you know, the competition now is among them, and we'll all know who's the best. And to be honest, it'll make us better in midweek games. And uh, you know, want to try to win as many midweek games as we can, and you know, try to give ourselves a chance at a regional bid, at large bid, if uh, we weren't able to win the CA this year. All right, now to the bullpen here. We got Brian Burbitsky, the closer, and a few other guys, Cody Norman, Andrew Barbarino, Brett Schreiber, bridging uh, gap. Really was one of your stronger units last year. Can you just talk about that really quick? Real quick, the you know, Baseball America had nominated uh, Brian Burbitsky Player of the Year for the conference. So if, I'll tell you what, if he's the Player of the Year, I'll show you the team that has a really good year because um, you know we're counting on Brian a lot at the end of the games. He's going to be in most big situations for us all year long. And, you know, anything that's close come the seventh, eighth, or ninth inning, you're going to see the ball in Brian Verbitsky's hand. And, you know, if he can come through and have a great year, I think you're going to see a good year out of Hoss for baseball. All right, Coach. And finally, before we wrap things up here, pick second. Obviously, to exceed those ex expectations, you'd have to win the conference. <laughs> and if, if Hofstra doesn't win their first CAA title in program history, what do you think they have to do? You know, uh, I think we're going to have to, to definitely, you know, overcome – the loss of Danny Poma, you know, that was CAA Player of the Year. You have to go count them out for us. We're going to need a little time to become who we are because we're going to be a little bit different offensively. I think you lose a lot when you lost those two. And, um, you know, I think in this preseason, these first uh, 12 games, we need to, to just figure out what kind of team we're going to be. And then we need to be at full tilt when we go to James Madison. I think James Madison is going to be as good a team as we've seen in the conference. And, you know, I preach to the kids every day, this team's built on pitching and defense, not offense. Cause you know, that's how I think you win. So if our pitching can come through like what we think we can, and if uh, Brantley can hold down second base or, or somebody can step in and hold down second base, I, I think we're going to be really good. All right. Hofstra baseball coach John Russo inside the WV Mason Report on GoHofstra.com. You guys are kicking off your season Friday down in Norman, Oklahoma. Coach, thanks for the time, and great luck this season. Thanks, man.